Hello, everybody. So, smart banking, real-time driven. Um, why I'm talking about this overall, I mean, everybody of you expect real-time driven things today. Um, if you look for video, uh, you want to find it immediately. If you uh, send an email, you expect that the other person uh, receives it immediately, and really that you may be getting even nervous if it doesn't receive it immediately. Um, if you store something or store some notes, you want to re refind it. Um, everything should be real time. So, but talking into um, banking, this is today actually not the case. So, just make sure that this is working. Banking today looks more like this. And uh, that's real time banking. So, uh, how this works in banking, you go to your most favorite uh, local branch. Um, and the process is there, and I would like to guide you through four processes, just uh, how they are there today, is that if you have an account opening, you may need to queue up, uh, you may need to form a, a for, uh, fill out a form, which is all quite tedious. Um, if you want to make a money transfer, you know that <laughs> um, you have a, like a paper you need to fill out, you meet, need to remember an IBAN, which is one of the most uh, easy to remember numbers, uh, <laughs> I think, in the world. And then if you want to have some transparency of what's actually going on on your account, you get some kind of balance statements on a monthly basis. And if you actually want to have some action uh, with uh, maybe some of you, uh, you want to lock your card, um, you need to wait in line and maybe go through some tedious process about actually answering the calls, the questions who you actually are. So um, talking about banking, who of you has an account here? Can you just please raise your hand? Is there anybody who has not a bank account? Don't see anybody, cool. So this is how we, how we did it, do it today. And maybe now, looking into your banks, they are actually more innovative. Um, so what the banks maybe you have today are doing is that they put these processes, which I just introduced to you, um, and put them online. So what you see is the same thing uh, in an offline world. If you want to open a bank account electronically uh, with your banks, then you need to f fill out a form again. So we think uh, <laughs> it's not really the same. Uh, you cannot just put an email uh, and then just uh, um, put a letter and scan it and say that's an email. It's not the same. Um, we think that actually if you need to do banking, um, this must be really rethought from the ground up, how this actually should work. And therefore, what we are, we are number 26. Uh, number 26 um, is essentially a, an account, uh, it's a card, uh, and it's an app. But it's built for real-time real -time and mobile-first experience. So we thought about how actually we built this kind of product for you so that it really meets the today's needs and not the yesterday needs. So I would like to go through the same things now, how they should be, and not just with us, but with any bank you would expect. Um, so account opening, um, you should be able to do from the sofa at home at 11 p.m. in the night, if necessary. And how this is with us is that you can do this with a mobile phone um, where you can really sign up uh, you have a, a video call with a person of our customer service to identify you where you need to show your pass passport. And this is necessary so that not anybody can an open an account for you. But this is important so that you actually can do it immediately. And thanks to modern technology with mobile phones that everybody just has um, and the video quality, this is really good possible. And then money transfer. Money transfer should be instant and easy. And you should not remember every IBAN uh, maybe today, which is much harder. So what we do there is you can pick one of your favorite contacts, um, enter the amount, and click send. And yes, it's immediately received by the other person, um, which even gets a notification, hey, boom, here is your money. Um, and you know that he has received it, actually. So just comparing it to how it's traditional with the beautiful Alakshan is that you would actually maybe fill something out, but you don't know if it actually was co correctly filled out, if there was a typo or anything. Transparency, the bank account statement. Normally, you have a monthly bank account statement. Come on. Uh, what you really want is you want to see if the transaction was actually happening immediately. So imagine you drive with a taxi, you pay with your credit card, you want to have a confirmation that actually you paid only the 15 euro or how, how much ever the taxi ride was. 
And what we also do is, so if, if for example, your card is currently blocked, you will get a notification that actually your card was used. Um, so, or um, if you have not sufficient funds currently in your account, you get a notification that, hey, you're missing funds on your account. And last but not least, what you also would expect in a real-time world is that you have full control of your account, not waiting in line on a phone number where you actually maybe lost the phone number, um, not just being able to lock your, phone, your card, but actually also maybe to unlock the card. So what, you, what, you, what is necessary in today's world is that you just go open the app and say, hey, in real time, you want to block your card for international, um, for online, or for cash withdrawals, actually. But if you find your card maybe again, what happened to me, for example, when I was in New York, um, after half an hour I found my card and it was actually not stolen, I just misplaced it, you can unlock it again. Um, same as easy as you locked it. So, but what is driving that? What's the technology we're using? And I would like to share some insights with you, which is just also on the works. To uh, recognize and point out here, number 26 is a startup. We are just launched this year on the 26th of January. So we are very new to the space, and um, what's, we have a lot of things going on on our side currently. So what I want to show you is what's the technology, what's currently in development, and how we want to move forward. Basically, the simple architecture we have is that obviously we have a mobile phone with Android, iOS, or even with the web we support, but it's, it's a pre-requirement that you have a mobile phone for us. Um, we are currently based on Amazon Web Services. We have there an Elastic Beanstalk. We have EC2 instances to scale up everything. In the back end, on the database side, we have SQL and NoSQL databases. And for any asynchronous processing, we're using SQS, um, machine learning, or Lambda expressions. This helps us to build a really scalable system. So what, are, what we want to do is we want to create smarter banking for you. We believe that smarter banking should make it easier for you actually to make your, uh, your, um, your, solve your financial problems uh, and have control over your account. So I would like to present you today two things we are doing here. And the one thing which is important is linking transactions. Linking transactions. Uh, Venice is important, and it's a very typical use case. Um, I'm ordering things uh, like uh, online, and I have uh, I want a t-shirt, trouser, a lot of stuff, but at the end, uh, I really keep just one. Maybe this happened to you as well, not just to me. And then it's really weird, because what my account statement says, I actually have an income of, let's say, 1,000 euro, uh, and I've spent 900 euros. But what I actually want to know is, hey, you spent 100 euro on, euro on clothes. So that's a very simple thing, but um, and would be very helpful. So. What we are currently working on is to identify actual transactions which should be linked so that you actually know that there is a thing you actually bought, but then you send something back, so actually you just spent the 100 euro. And we try to do this um, with clustering transactions, but we find out that this is just results in too many false positives. So we went a little bit further and looked into a vector space modeling method, um, which allows us better grouping, actually, uh, the transactions into logical groups. So what we do there is that we have a transaction, we put a lot of attributes on top of it, um, like the time, like uh, the bank account number, and based on those, we put them into this model where you actually see how close the transactions are together. Obviously, it's just your transactions, so how close two transactions are together, and based on that similarity score, we actually say, hey, those should be actually linked. And based on this, the result is, um, Sorry, the result is that you have a linked transactions. And just now the architecture, which is again the SQS, we, we store this here in the NoSQL database. Out of that, uh, we have Lambda functions, which process every transaction asynchronously, and the result is uh, a group transaction. So here is a, a screenshot of how this will look like in the future. Um, when you have a details, you see the left screen that you have a detail view, view where you have a one transaction, but it actually consists of two transactions. But at the end of the day, it should be just categorized once that you know you spend 100 euro. Now the next topic, categorizing transactions. We think, and that what we have today, is what is very important, that you want to have transparency on where actually your money is going. We think this is very important. 
And this today works also very well with any card transactions. So if you're using your MasterCard today, in any of the shops, uh, supermarkets, anything, the, uh, the um, transaction is immediately in real time categorized. This is not true and not so easy for bank transactions. This is also not easy for if, uh, um, for person to person transactions. So if I go out um, at, um, at lunch with my friends or colleagues um, and just one person pays and I send him a money beam, which is a real time transaction to a person, this this uh, transaction today is not categorized. So we believe there are two, th two things uh, we need to categorize. This kind of person-to-person -person transactions for the lunch money, for example, and then, uh, for example, um, a transaction to my landlord, where I actually pay my bill. So let's look at those two, um, two, two topics. First, uh, how it will look like and what we actually want to achieve. This is uh, what we actually want to have. We want to have all our, our um, transactions categorized correctly in according categories. And obviously, uh, you can change that if you think it's differently. So you really understand your spendings, may change your behavior or not, but it's important just as an insight. So let's look at the two-person uh, transaction. So again, taking the example of I'm uh, going for lunch with my colleagues, one person pays out of five people, everybody sends him a money beam. What you want to actually have this money beam categorized as lunch money, which is uh, for uh, in a category restaurants. So what we do is we take the reference text, uh, if there is something like, like written, thank you for the lunch or something like that, we want to recognize that. And we're do doing this with the uh, state-of-the-art natural language processing way, so that we actually to uh, parse, tokenize, and lemmatize the text to extract some kind of sense. We then um, use a lexical database to match this and as well a translation engine. And we're using it as a lexical database here, WordNet, and as a translation engine, in this case, just dict.cc, if you know that, um, to make really sense of actually what is the reference text. This doesn't work for all cases, but for where people do that, this is really working. And what example we have is um, if you, uh, for example, put noodle in there, we know that it's food. If it's yufka, which is uh, some kind of sort of term, if you don't know that, <laughs> Uh, this is food as well. Or um, if somebody's writing debit from a doctor, this is health. Um, if it's baby oil, again, children, or if it's for like, taxified fat, then it's cars. So this is one way of categorizing the person-to-person -person transactions, which are today typically not categorized. Next, um, to a merchant. To a merchant, um, obviously, if you send money uh, to Vapiano, you as a person would know, obviously, that's bar and restaurant, but how does the machine know that? And that's not such an easy problem. So what we try there to do, and this is, again, some kind of insight, is we use machine learning here. Uh, we actually learn uh, and train our model based on card transactions, because card transactions today, they are already categorized, because MasterCard, thank you, um, is, ha does have a category for the merchant. Then, based on that, we actually train the model, and we test the model on bank transactions. And what you see in the right picture here is a typical model if you use machine learning, where you see actually with the, with the actual predicted value um, and, the, and the match that with a true value, how accurate is it detecting at, um, each of those categories. And we use different um, methods actually to de determine that, the transaction category, um, and we measure it on the F score which is typically a measure for, uh, for the accuracy of any prediction. So we, you, we test their methods like naive bias, supported vector machines, and multi-class logistic regression. Um, and for us, we found out that the multi-class logistic regression was working the best with an accuracy currently of 90%. Obviously, this is something which is working, which we are currently in work, and maybe we have actually do this even better in the future, but we are really happy and excited that we can provide a categorization which matches 90% of transactions um, to you in the future. So these are the two things. Um, I'm putting them together, linked, linking and categorizing transactions. How the complete architecture now would look like is that any transaction which comes in, and in this case, we're putting this again on the queue, um, first goes into a NoSQL because it's really scalable. Um, and then on that, an event is actually triggered, which helps us to process it either with Lambda functions or with our machine learning, which then again grouped, uh, and uh, which as a result, we have then grouped and, tran and categorized transactions for uh, every of our transactions. So 
this is something which is currently going on, uh, and we're very excited actually to creating uh, some more kind of a smarter banking experience. But this is just the beginning. What our plan is really is to become build world's best bank experience in every way. And we are doing this always with the, with actually with the user first. So what the things you have seen here, we spend a lot on research, not on the technology side, but also what the customer actually wants. And obviously, with the <laughs> it's quite interesting. Uh, German is still a cash-based world, so it doesn't work perfectly. And we're really excited to see a lot of changes hopefully coming up in the next um, months and uh, also in the next year. Um, especially in the card transaction sector, as currently by the end of this year, the, the fee for merchants, um, which is actually you know, quite high today, is now lowered thanks to the European Union, um, so that hopefully more and more places, even in Germany, will accept card transactions. So, our goal um, is that we really want to be an innovate, innovation leader in the, uh, in the space of uh, banking. And uh, what you see also, for example, here on the left side is uh, an overdraft uh, picture. We are currently, and this was announced just, I think, yesterday on TechCrunch, we will launch an overdraft in our account very soon, um, which is the 1st of December. And this is, again, it's something different than what you expect from your current banks, where you maybe actually need to knee and ask, hey, could you please give me an overdraft? Um, we expect it should be fully self-service and full in your control what you do there, so that you actually just open the app, you say, hey, I want an overdraft, and then you permit an overdraft, and you have full control. So you can, and as you see also here in the picture, is you have literally a slider where you can say, hey, I have, to, I want, um, I have 200 um, euro available as an overdraft of 2,000 euro, but I just want to activate it for 100, for 1,000 euro, for 100 euro. Plus, you will also full control. You can activate, deactivate. Um, you will have to be, get a notification if you use it. There will be transparency about how much you actually pay for an overdraft. So we, need, we think this must be Again, the overdraft is an example. This must be built for the user, not make it in a complicated terms or anything very complicated for the bank. So the, the, it's really essential to think in the user-first approach. Second, we want to build a smart fintech hub. What is that? We believe we don't and will not provide the most meaningful um, and most complete product in the in the world, but we think there are a lot of great companies actually in the fintech space out there that we want to cooperate with. And giving you one example um, is that we are currently cooperating with Barzahlen. Barzahlen um, is, a, is, a, is a company which enables that we, that our customers actually can pay, also withdraw or deposit money at the supermarket. So that if you go to the Rewe, you can just go there and say, hey, here are my 50 euro. Our, our application creates a, um, a barcode, and this you can just deposit on your account. You can at the same time use a barcode for sure to pay your supermarket bill. But this is just also possible because of corporations, I think, in the supermarket space, uh, in, the <laughs> in the fintech space, sorry. And last but not least, um, what our, our, we are today in Germany and Austria, but obviously our vision is a little bigger. We want to become really a, the first pan-European bank. So, who are we? Uh, we are currently 70 people, as mentioned. We just started this year. Um, uh, we are quite a very um, young, young, but also ambitious um, startup. And we are really excited that we also see that we get a lot of positive feedback today, actually, from the press, from people. So if you go to, for example, the App Store um, on iOS, you will see that we have an average rating, I think, of 4.8 stars currently. Uh, on Android and the Play Store, we have a lot of a very good rating as well. So we're really excited, actually, to moving forward and provide an even more complete product. So thank you very much. <laughs>